hike a lot, but even if I know the trail, I always see something new, just like in my kitchen. I still like to explore and create a new dish that gets me off the beaten path. Let me share a secret recipe. Discover an ingredient that fires your imagination. Choose other flavors to match. Find the best way to cook them. My secret recipe? Cooking without a recipe. It's such a nice day out, I think I'll fire up the grill. I'm going to play around with some familiar ingredients for dinner, create something new. Making something new from an old friend is a great way for you to begin experimenting in your own kitchen. It's easy to cook without a recipe and create a dinner you can call your own. Just follow a few simple flavor guidelines and whatever you do, always start with great ingredients. Plump, juicy chicken's a great way to start any meal. And since this one's headed for the grill, I'm going to break it down into smaller parts, make it a little easier to get on the that grill and work with. And when I'm working with raw chicken in my kitchen, I always like to use another cutting board. I don't like cross-contamination. you got to be super careful with chicken. So, here's how I'm going to break it down. Breaking down a chicken is actually quite simple. First thing I do is flip it over and find the end of the bones here at the end of the thigh. And then just break them out of their socket, flip it back over, and cut that thigh right off. You can see how it pops right out of its socket, and that's where you make the cut. Now when I'm taking off the breast, I just simply follow the breast bone underneath the meat. Mother Nature's built in a great guide for your knife. Just ride it right along that rib cage. Okay, now it still has its wing attached to it. I like to leave the drumstick part of the wing attached to the breast and then remove the rest of the wing. Here's how I do it. Just slide through that flap of skin and cut right through it. So let's see, I've got two chicken legs, two chicken breasts, and a carcass with lots of flavor in that carcass. I'm not going to throw the carcass out. I'll freeze it. Next time I need a chicken broth, it'll be there ready to roast and simmer away. This calls for a freezer bag. This is one of the reasons I always buy whole chicken, so I've got carcass left over to make chicken broth. Now since chicken has a fairly neutral flavor and I'm grilling today, I'm going to need to jazz it up a bit. That calls for a marinade. Now, marinades can be flavored in an infinite number of ways. I can choose from just about any ingredient in this pantry because, of course, marinades are a great place to experiment, which I tend to do in two basic ways. Sometimes I pick a dish and make it new by just changing the flavors. For instance, the marinating chicken. Change the spice, change the dish. I can add to it, say, paprika, and I'll have Hungarian chicken goulash. Or I'll add some nutmeg to it, and I'll end up with French poulet. Or add some allspice, and I'll have Jamaican jerk chicken. But on the other hand, sometimes I find a flavor and stick to it, like my chipotle peppers. In fact, they would go really well with that allspice. This would make a good jerk chicken. A little Central American fusion, perhaps, some Jamaican allspice, some Mexican peppers. A good jerk marinade has four basic parts to it, all of them simple. An onion puree, some allspice for flavor, some kind of heat, and some sourness as well. And because limes are so common in Jamaica, that's what I'm going to use today. I'm looking for authentic flavor. I might as well take the time to put the lime zest in too, get some perfume. There we go. Two limes, two bunches of green onions, one chicken, and now for the allspice. I am going to add a splash of oil because it'll help it puree nice and easy. 
some salt, and something sweet for balance. Molasses, very common ingredient in Jamaica. The sweetness of the molasses will balance the sharpness of the lime, the pungency of the onions, and the heat of the pepper, which I'm just going to add straight in. Just break it up, toss it right in. I'm using my favorite stick blender. These are great. They're so much easier because there's less mess to clean up afterwards, basically. But of course, you could use a food processor or even a regular blender to make this marinade. Jerk marinade, meet Mr. Chicken. These guys are going to need an hour or two to get to know each other before I fire them on the grill. And you know, while it relaxes in the fridge, I've got time to bang out a snack. All this talk about flavors got me hungry. Let's see. Green onions, fennel. Aha. Trim those stalks right off. Cut it in half. Get rid of that woody core, the stem in the center. And then cut it as thin as possible. Slice it right good. I'm simply going to take this fennel, thinly shaved, and turn it into a quick salad. Big splash of olive oil. Some lemon juice. And some salt and pepper, of course. I can't think of a better or a simpler way to enjoy fennel than that salad right there. Oh, talk about bright flavors. Boy, this will tide me over nicely. Now, that chicken's marinating, but I'm still going to need something else to go with it. The question is, what flavors? Feel like you're cooking stuck in a rut? Well, one of the best ways to break free is to experiment with a familiar dish. Change a flavor or two, and you've created a new dish you can call your own, like my version of jerk chicken. I began by breaking down a whole chicken. I decided to marinate it with very traditional Jamaican allspice and not so traditional chipotle chili peppers. I then pureed them with green onions, lime juice, molasses, and olive oil. A nice flavor base. Jerk chicken with my twist. Now here's something else I've been looking forward to playing around with. Brown rice. It'll go great with that jerk chicken. And anytime I make rice, of course, there's always a little butter involved. And some chicken stock. Normally when you make brown rice, the butter just gets dumped on at the end. But why not start with the butter? In fact, why not brown the butter and then build the rice on top of it? Same ingredients, rice and butter, but a whole different flavor. And that's one of the reasons I've chosen butter. Unlike the vegetable oil that I cook with often, butter adds flavor. The trick in the kitchen is knowing what to use when. adds special occasion flavor. It tastes great, but it's solid at room temperature. That means it's full of saturated fat, hard fat, fat that clogs up the works. That's why for everyday healthy cooking, I use vegetable oil. It's unsaturated, which means it's liquid at room temperature. It's better for your heart. And just look at all the selection. Safflower, sunflower, canola, corn, olive oil, all good choices. But of course, scientists did figure out a way to saturate perfectly good vegetable oil. They heat it up, they put it under great pressure and turn it into saturated margarine. Its trans fatty acids spread nicely on toast, but I prefer Mother Nature's best. Healthy vegetable oil or good old-fashioned butter. Now, 
when you're browning butter, keep an eye on it because when the foam starts to go down and it starts to brown, you've got to be ready to stop the cooking. Like that. You can do any number of things. You can simply take the butter and pour it into something else. That'll take some of the heat out of it. Or you can add something like brown rice to it. This will cool that pan down immediately. Now normally if I was using white rice, it would only take a two to one ratio of liquid to rice to cook it out. But because I'm using brown rice, I'm going to need three parts liquid. That's because brown rice still has many of its nutrients remaining on the outside of each kernel. Therefore, it takes a little bit more liquid to penetrate to the center and cook that rice tender. And a bay leaf or two. Some salt and pepper. And now I'll just turn that down to a simmer. The rice will take about 45 minutes to cook. Now, I've got an idea for some color to go with that jerk chicken. A rainbow of bell peppers. Just look at that orange, yellow, green, and red. You can just tell they're going to taste good. I think I'll do a simple pan saute with these. And for that, I'll also need a nice red onion. I'll start with a hot pan. I'll just cut these into thin strips. And same thing for the onions, just thin strips. And this time I'm going to start with olive oil. Lots of flavor in olive oil and it can handle a much higher temperature so it'll really help sear these vegetables. And that's why I took the time to heat that pan up first. I don't want those vegetables to sit in a cold pan waiting for it to warm up. Now as soon as I smell peppers and onions sauteing, I think of one flavor. Fennel seed. This is one of those flavors that you may not know the name of, but you definitely know what it tastes like. Have you ever eaten a sausage? Chances are it was flavored with fennel seed. And that's why I'm thinking of it. Because as soon as I smell those peppers and onions, I start thinking about sausages. Now of course today it's all about jerk chicken, but I can still put fennel seed in the peppers. And not just one or two, we're talking about a whole handful. Those are looking great. And my rice is simmering away nicely, and I'm sure by now the chicken and the jerk marinade have gotten to know each other fine. It's time to turn on the barbecue. cooking does not have to be complicated. I often just take a simple dish that I've made before and change a flavor or two. It's a great way to keep the fun in your kitchen. And it's also why I keep track of things in my kitchen journal. Because when you're freestyle cooking, you never know what you might stumble onto. Like a chicken. Today I began with a whole chicken. I broke it down and now it's marinating in a puree of chipotle chili peppers, allspice, green onions, lime juice, molasses, and olive oil. It's ready for the grill, but the grill's not ready for it. It's still warming up. But my roast peppers are ready, and my brown butter brown rice is almost ready. But that's not enough. I feel like making a salsa, but not a tomato salsa, a pineapple salsa. Who says salsas have to be made out of tomatoes anyway? Pineapples and tomatoes are both juicy, they're both sweet, they're both a little bit sour, they're both perfect for making a salsa. It's also a great way to take an old dish and update it and make it new. That should do it. Just cutting those up nice and small. First thing I think I'll do is add a little bit of olive oil. Just a good splash there. 
Now I think I'll add some red onion. The red onion's gonna give it some color, but it's also gonna give it some pungency because it's raw onion. It's gonna take a little bit of salt and probably the most distinctive flavor in any salsa of any kind, cilantro. Because whatever you put it in, it ends up dominating the flavors, which is why I only use it in strongly flavored things like salsas. Now the only thing missing here is a little heat, and I've got just the thing. I've been playing around a lot with smoky chipotles lately. I love this flavor. The other day I banged out a hot sauce just for kicks. It was really easy to make. Begin with three or four chipotle peppers. Add one cup each of tomato juice, red wine vinegar, and sugar. Bring the mixture to a simmer and continue cooking until the peppers soften and it reduces by half. Puree until smooth. This chipotle sauce is a wonderful all-purpose condiment. You can use it with just about anything. It'd go great with fish or meat, whatever you're having. And of course, you don't have to use just chipotles. You could use whatever pepper you happen to have and make your own custom hot sauce. What's really nice about chipotle is it's smoky. I'm going to call this smoky salsa. Things are looking good in the kitchen. The peppers are done roasting. Brown butter, brown rice is almost done. It's time to fire the chicken. I've preheated the grill on the highest possible setting. I want that baby smoking hot. But before I fire the chicken, I'm actually going to turn off the back part of the grill. That's because there's a bit of sugar in the jerk marinade, and I don't want it to burn. That molasses will burn quickly, so by turning off the back, no problems. And I'm firing it skin side down. That's the presentation side. That's the side that's going to have the nicest looking cross hatches when I'm done. Hey, I want this to look good, too. Nobody seems to agree on why it's called jerk chicken. My favorite, though, is this one. When you pop that into your mouth, all that spice kicks in and you jerk back. Hey, jerk chicken. I love grilling. It gets all five of my senses fired up. I can see how tasty that chicken's going to be right now. I can smell it, too. As I flip it over, I can feel how juicy it is. I can hear it sizzling away. And in just a few minutes, I'm going to get to taste it. Jerk chicken barbecued up nicely, and now I'm just putting the finishing touches on dinner. I made this beautiful bright pineapple salsa earlier. Who says you have to make salsas with just tomatoes? This is going to go great with that chicken. I also have some of my snack left over too. Fennel salad, just dressed simply with lemon juice, a little bit of olive oil. But to finish up this table, I want to make a drink, something really simple. Super simple. Just a splash of pineapple juice. Topped up with some ginger ale. Yeah, vaguely Caribbean. It's going to taste good. Now here's something I've been dying to try for weeks, brown butter, brown rice. I started out by just simply browning some butter and then I built the rice right on top of the butter. 
and just look at that chicken. This is probably the tastiest thing I've put on my grill in a long time. I played around a bit with the jerk marinade. Instead of using the traditional blow the roof off your head habanero hot pepper, I used chipotle's. Very trendy, nice smoky jalapeno flavor. I think it's going to be awesome. In fact, it's time for a taste. Mmm. Very nice. You know, next time you fire up your stove or your grill, pick a simple recipe and play around with it a bit. See what you can create. Hey, you never know. You might come up with something just as tasty as jerk chicken or fennel seed roasted peppers or even brown butter brown rice. We just think pineapple for salsa. It's just as good as tomato, really. Some brown rice, but there's a secret flavor in there. Let's see if you can figure it out. Chicken stock? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I did? I took the butter mm -hmm. and browned it. It's really good rice. I love this chicken. The marinade, you know, it's really nothing but onion puree with a whole lot of flavors in it. Really? Cheers. Cheers. Mm. Pineapple juice ginger ale. <laughs>